Hello, my name is Ritwik and you are watching me on Exhibit Magazine. What I have today with me is the super affordable Moto G51 5G and I have been using this device for the last one month since its release or maybe before that because I had the privilege to and uh, today you will know why it is a great buy or why it isn't. As you can see at the back, it has a full HD display, supports 5G of course as the name suggests and has a triple camera setup. Inside this box, as you can see we have this phone over here, a 20 watt charger and a C type cable. This is a huge huge phone, I mean this is pretty massive. It's 6.8 inches long and feels very narrow to use so if you keep this in hand it's gonna it's gonna feel very good to use and it's very long so and at the back let's see the back if you see the back it's made up of plastic it's uh, I think it's blue in color it's very blue and it's vibrant and feels very good uh, to touch it has a Motorola logo at the back and feels quite premium talking about the ports and buttons on the right hand side we have a power button which is also the fingerprint sensor. Here is the volume rocker and here is the dedicated assistant button. At the top you have a noise cancelling microphone, on the left you have the sim card tray. At the bottom you have a 3.5mm jack, microphone, USB-C type and a speaker grill. Moto G51 has an IPS LCD display with a 120Hz refresh rate. On, contrary to this, Moto G31 which was released 10 days prior to this phone had an AMOLED screen. But the reason why, why I think I believe that they have switched to less expensive IPS LCD displays because they wanted to cut the cost as 5G was the main priority on this phone. NEG glass has been used on this device which is quite equivalent to uh, Gorilla Glass 3. Uh, what is noticeable in this phone is that it has 12 5G band connectivity which is pretty rare in phones with this price range. Coming to the price range, Moto G51 comes only in one variant which is 4GB and 64GB and costs around 14,999. Now coming to the camera of this phone, you, you can see a 13 megapixel punch hole camera in the front. On the back, you have a 50 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. Here are some of the photos that I clicked from this phone. You also have the dual mode where you can click the front and the back pictures both at the same time. What makes Motorola stand out from all the other phones is the gestures that this phone works on. And by gestures, I mean this. So yes, you can just uh, shake your phone to switch on and off the flashlight. You can just flip your phone here and there to switch on the camera, which, which is again a Motorola feature and I think it's very, very cool. Video viewing experience in this phone is pretty decent, but not the best. It would, it would have been better if it had an AMOLED screen but as I've said earlier the prices would have gone uh, way up than it really is. To give you a gist about how the phone sounds, here is just an example. Also, what's quite interesting about this phone is that it has a live caption option here which you can switch on, I'm sorry, you can switch on here and now your video will have, if you are watching any movie or any video, uh, you can sw switch this on and now you, your, your video will have a live caption. Apple or Apple? Android. Android. Smartwatch or a normal Smartwatch. 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 
Now coming to the performance, I am quite surprised why Snapdragon decided to name the processor 480 Plus. It's way stronger than the regular 480 and in some cases perform equally well or maybe much stronger than the Snapdragon 720. So this processor does not fall under the 480, 480 Snapdragon category. So please do not be deceived by its name. Now coming to the battery, Moto G51 has a 5000 mAh battery and gives you a 20 watt fast charger with it. I think it makes up for a good mid-range uh, gaming phone because of its processor and uh, its 120Hz refresh rate. I ran a few big games such as COD to see how it performs and ran the game with high resolution and it didn't cause any problem. What I like about Moto G51 is that, they, is that, is that Moto provides a very good connectivity on, on this phone. So whenever I'm on the call, the sound is pretty smooth and pretty clear. On a conclusion note, I believe this phone is not for someone who is more camera centric, but will make a pretty decent phone for someone, for a student, maybe uh, a person who is more of a multimedia person who likes to watch movies or just listen to good music. And uh, maybe I think companies should switch their base variant from 4 GB and 64 GB to maybe 6 GB uh, RAM and 128 GB storage because it's more of a necessity now. Uh, overall, I believe this is a good phone on a tighter budget. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please, please, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such great content. Till then, take care. Have a good day.